hello, I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and I get to travel history. I get to hear the stories that people have made the history, and this show is about families and history that goes way, way back in this country, before it was a country, while it was just pioneers. My guest today is Jean Holland. Jean, welcome to Better Life Television. And when did your family come? In the, on the Mayflower. See, you can't get earlier <laughs> you can't, unless you were Native American fella yes. or gal. And remind me, we want to talk about those people. And Barbara Johnson. And Barbara, your family came in? In the, eight, or the late 1600s. You know, we were back over in Germany, I don't know, doing what? Maybe wishing somebody would come out west. Mm -hmm. um, you've come with history. You have these lapel ribbons. You must belong to the same club. We do. This is, um, this is our official insignia. It's a spinning wheel, and you can't really see it, but there's a staff with, uh, it's supposed to be flax woven around it, and that was the symbol adopted by the DAR when they um, organized in 1890. DAR stands for? Daughters of the American Revolution. And you are both proven daughters of the American Revolution. That's the only thing that has in common here? Yes, yes. Women from the whole country who can trace direct a ancestry back to that war. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now you said women not only who had boys in the war or a husband in the war, but women who supported the war. Yes, yes. Supported. Maybe they cooked for them, maybe they were the nurses for them. Or a minister did a sermon that was in support of and, uh -huh. and paid taxes, farmers yep. who paid taxes, people who had inns or taverns and they sheltered and fed. Soldiers, soldiers. of the revolution. Mm -hmm. Lots of different things. And so we're talking northern, east coast, pre, you know, how many colonies there would be included? 13. The first 13 colonies. Mm -hmm. I just want to hear about you and why this is important. Well, it's important to me because, well, for one thing, it's nice to know that I was, my family was part of the beginnings of this country, that they came here to establish a life that was better than in the old country, where they could have their freedoms, people could live the way they wanted to and not be overlorded by a king who is in the distance and tells you how you should live your life or what you should be doing. And how you could pay taxes. Yeah, you could pay the everything. taxes. Mm -hmm. And how would you answer that? Um, it's important to me to know about my history as well. But when I began this, I did not know it would go that far back into the Revolutionary War. I only discovered that in more recent years. But it's been a fascinating Germany to go to some of those areas. And I have met cousins from those families that are still living in, for instance, Maine and Massachusetts. And the original house in Massachusetts is still standing and is kept and preserved very well by the current family who owns it. And, and they let you, did you knock on their door? I didn't know the house still existed till after I came home. <laughs> Next trip. <laughs> but a cousin that I didn't know I had who corresponded by email sent me pictures. Here we are again, email telling yes. you about yes. Revolutionary War. Yes. Wow. 
you've got a stack of things here. Why don't you just go through them and tell oh. us why you <laughs> brought them today? All right, well, I brought this one. This is a picture of some of the um, early members of our chapter who dedicated a plaque in the memory of Livia Stevens Briggs. She was a daughter of a Revolutionary War soldier. And so that's not very common in the West. You don't have many people who were that closely re related. Granddaughters or grandsons or great-grandsons would come to the West, but not many actual daughters. So we're one of the few chapters that can say we have a daughter buried in the, um, in the area. Now she cannot be, she's not a true daughter of, of the, um, in our organization, a true daughter of the revolution would be someone who joined the um, organization. And she's deceased she was, by 400, She was years. dead before the organization came right. into being, so but, she could not join. But the organization came into being what year? 1890. And when did it come to this community? 1934. And that's part of the reason you're here, because you want to brag. <laughs> yes, we want to, um, in April of 2014, we celebrate the 80th anniversary of our chapter. We're planning to have a high tea at Countryside Village here in Grants Pass and uh, celebrate that 80th anniversary. Count me in. <laughs> oh, please come. It's open? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I see here gravestones. Mm -hmm. What is the reason for? Well, this is also from Livia Stevens. And Hertz. that verifies her connection right. with the Civil War? I mean, Revolutionary. Rev Revolution. Man, I jumped way ahead. <laughs> yeah. I? Well, we have people in that too. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yes. And probably World War One and World War Two, yes. Vietnam. Yes. Mm -hmm. And never forget Korea because I'd, right. I'd hear about that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, the the whole idea. I opened your magazine that you had brought today. Um, it's called the American Spirit, and it's a beautiful little monthly magazine. Mm, monthly magazine. Right? Anyone can subscribe to it. It says, did you have a pa revolutionary patron in your family tree? So somebody can actually do their research. Oh, somebody sure. viewing from Grants Pass, Oregon, mm -hmm. can check out New Hampshire and Massachusetts and Virginia. And how can they do that? Um, I'm the chapter registrar for the Rogue River chapter here in Grants Pass. And uh, I assist people in completing their applications once they've gathered their documents or if they're having difficulty, then I can also give them ideas and help them to obtain the necessary documents to become a member and I help them simplify the whole process because at first it seems overwhelming. But I can work alongside them. Proof, proof, proof. Exactly. Important. Exactly. So my <clears throat> husband's somebody was there, mm -hmm. and I don't even know the name, but I could have him bring it to you and then his granddaughter or Mm -hmm. could join mm -hmm. on that, what do you call it, shirt tail or on that? Well, and, and your husband could become a member of SAR and then she could become a member of, now how old is she? Well, we have sorted ages. Okay. We had 20 in their 20s and down to their teens, so three girls. Well, the DAR is women 18 and over and then there's C-A-R, which is children of the American Revolution, and that's 18 and under. So yeah. that's why I asked the age. So there's a, a learning process mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Please tell me more of the things in your book here. Oh, this is a picture of a tree planting we did in the All Sports Park when it was fairly new. Why tree it's, planting? Uh, we wanted to do something to help the community and we checked and the All Sports Park would like to, at that time, wanted people, wanted trees. And, and in your annual uh, national paper, does it write up things like this that we can. the DAR is doing? Daughters of the American Revolution is doing in their community to make it a better place? We can do that in our state newsletter or we can send things to the national. Now, what have you been involved in? Um, one of the things that I, that I was involved in last year is what's called World Book Night. It's held every April across the U.S. and I believe is also in the U.K. as well and it's a literacy promotion project. Wonderful. And we apply, we were chosen last year. Publishers donate books. We don't have to buy them, but publishers donate them. They're by various well-known authors. This one happens to be Playing for Pizza by John Grisham. Uh, there's lots of different authors and we give them out in the community on a certain day in April and it's happening all across the U.S. and we hand them out into community to encourage people to read. And are they of historic value, the, the books? I mean, they can be a variety of subject. Mm -hmm. There's a list, a reading list given every year and then books are chosen from that and sent to each community. A wonderful idea. So you're giving back not only in trees but in books. Mm -hmm. Are there other things? The DAR nationally offers several scholarships for um, some in history, some in education. Um, so it, a student could apply. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. don't have to be a daughter's right. daughter of the American Revolution. Right, students to can receive apply. And then there are contests, essay contests, and the winners receive scholarships for those. So they could write about some person or some part of the, the history? Mm -hmm. They're given subjects each year mm -hmm. through our national office. And then they write on those subject kids all across the country. And there's even a national winner that goes to Washington, D.C. And then there's regional winners and state and local winners as well. And this has been done in communities all across the country. Yes, yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier, just chatting about Indian First Nation people, Native Americans. Mm -hmm. How does that tie in with DAR? Well, we um, at each meeting have a what we call a Native American minute. And uh, one of our members will do a little short reading. And so we kind of, we honor them as well as being part of that part of history. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, did I understand that there's scholarships available to these different communities? This is, uh, you work with these people? Mm -hmm. Well, the Shamawa Indian School near Salem, um, it's a boarding school. And DAR at the state and national level supports them in many ways. That's another way that Native American children are helped to further their education. Wonderful. So that might, you might <clears throat> send a check that would mm -hmm. support a teacher or right. new desks or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. last year, DAR, uh, the different chapters, um, sent funding to buy new um, basketball uniforms for their sports program. Very important. And so different, depending on the needs and also scholarships as well, then DAR for many, many years has supported the Indian school. Now, my question that came up as I was 
talking to people about you, mm -hmm. is DAR connected with other organizations? No, we're not. We're, we try to, we do not affiliate with anything else. Mm -hmm. Loosely, we, you are men's organization, which is Sons mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of the Revolution, and you are side-by-side -side organization. We're yes. together with the daughters. And they have to do all the same work? They have to do all the same. Yes. I don't know if their application is exactly like ours, but it's probably very similar. They have to prove a direct lineage to a patriot. And patriot's a word that I don't hear real often anymore. But I'm proud of you gals to, to bring that to my attention. Mm -hmm. Because your forefathers and mothers paid a terribly hard, high price for the freedom we enjoy and take for granted. Yes, yes. None of them got rich. No. Do you know their stories? In, in the magazine here, is it written up about someone who lost everything they had there um, to support the war? There could be articles about a particular person and, and how they fared. But this, I think the magazine tries to cover a lot of different interests, so. Well, I, I know that our, our founding fathers paid a tremendous price, and mothers, mm -hmm. for the freedom we enjoy and take for granted. You know, uh, I can't imagine that I'd have to send taxes to England or Germany or any place else or ask permission to buy and sell mm -hmm. right to own property right i guess i'm american through and through <laughs> mm -hmm. another guess. thing we do on down through history is one of the uh, projects with the dar nationally and otherwise is service to veterans mm -hmm. oh that would we be. do things for veterans at White City. We support ROTC programs. There's medals that can be. Um, ROTC stands for? Reserve Officer Training. OK. For students. For students. And what might you help with ROTC programs? Well, we've awarded medals to some of the Rogue Valley students. Mm -hmm. that are going into, for instance, the Navy or whatever, you know, whatever branch. And, um, and this might be done nationally, yes. not just by your no, chapter, right. but all, and would it be Mid written chapter. up in your Possibly. magazine yes. about honoring yes. young people? Yes. Um, we were in the Memorial Day Parade last year um, which, th whose theme was in support of our veterans. And we jointly participated in the parade with the Sons of the American Revolution. And that's locally. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on so Memorial it might Day. be in Portland, it might be in San Francisco, you might find chapters doing the right. same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And this year, the new President General in Washington, D.C has put an emphasis on celebrating America, she calls it, and there is a goal of one million hours of volunteer work. That's the goal uh, for DAR across the country. My question is, mm -hmm. will this qualify? Your, your time here, will that qualify as contributions to yes mm -hmm. oh I just love it's, it it's any yep. projects that are outside of in the community that are outside of DAR's work itself it's volunteer whether it be a library volunteer whatever it is that well, you're doing out in the community the world book night that I spoke of yes. earlier um, lots and lots of volunteer projects and I believe the million goal will be reached easily. very easily. Well, you've just put in two hours here on Better <laughs> Life Television, one for each of you telling us about our history. 
Mm -hmm. Incredible history of pioneering. You know, no one had really a, a free pass when they came here. No. Do you have stories, the Mayflower story, you could just fill me in? I'm not, I, I don't know much about my ancestor other than he was a servant for, I think, Bradford. And on the, sh the trip over in the Mayflower, it was very stormy. And for some reason, he was on deck and got swept overboard. But he was able to grab a rope and get pulled back on the ship. I know that about Oh, him. how scary. Yeah. Or you wouldn't be here telling us about this. <laughs> and he married a woman who came over on the Mayflower also. They had several children, big family. There's a whole society of John Howland, um, no, he was the ancestor of mm -hmm. many people. So they have their own society, which I have not joined, <laughs> not Ooh. yet, but I may. Oh, please do, but, and come yeah. back and tell us about the Holland, Howland? How, Howland, yeah. How do you spell that? H-O-W-L-A-N-D. Okay. Howland. And your ancestor, how do you spell that name? Well, I've got two. Daniel Ware, W-A-R-E, is the most common spelling. And then Ichabod McLean. And McLean is spelt numerous ways. <laughs> Even in your family? Yes, yes. So you might be related to Mike McLean, who's the historian around these parts. Right. Oh, how interesting. And if you were related to him, then he could dovetail on all your research, mm -hmm. wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, folks, yeah. if this has been interesting to you and you think you might be part of this organization, if only you worked a little, because it does take work, doesn't it? Does. It does. A little bit, yes. I mean, you fill out, verify. You fill out a pedigree chart, and you gather your, starting with yourself, you gather your own documents, birth, marriage, and uh, then you do that with your parents and your grandparents. And a lot of people don't have to go farther than that because they will already link into someone who is already a member of one of those organizations. See, I only had to do a birth certificate and marriage license because my mother was a member and is still a member. Her mother is 96 and still a member of our mm -hmm. Rogue River chapter. Yep, she's the one that does the genealogy. Mm -hmm. Well, we should have mom on TV, shouldn't <laughs> we? She's in Alaska yeah, right now. Yeah, she's visiting my sisters in Alaska for the winter. She's traveling to Alaska. Oh, yes. Is... <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, well, she's, hmm. she's quite the lady. Um, I look forward to meeting your mom. <laughs> so we have members. Our youngest member in recent years was in her mid-20s, all the way to 96. Yep. To mom. To mom. Yep. Um, my, I, I, and this, folks can get this information just by contacting the address here on Better Life Television. They can contact you with their names and phone numbers that are up. Right. You look forward to talking to new people. Who oh, yes, oh, yeah. Definitely. And how many people in your organization? Right now we have around 20. OK. We're a small group, but we're growing. And in Oregon? In Oregon, there I don't. There are 37 chapters and about 2,000, I believe. And in the mm -hmm. United States? 170,000. And how many chapters? 3,000. 3,000 chapters. So they all feed into this magazine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And tell their stories about, and I, I, it's nice to see them honoring Native Americans mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. because this is a part of our history, and I've been able to follow a little bit back in my family history to Canada and their roots. It's, it's very fulfilling mm -hmm. it is. to find out that I just didn't happen here. I just have a history and mm -hmm. roots. Um, and when we 
have a bad day and do a little complaining about how rough it is, then we stop and pause and think back to what some of our ancestors must have gone through, and it mm -hmm. puts things in perspective. Yes, it does. And there's a tree here, an apple tree, that's now being tended for the first time. I mean, I just see apple pie, whereas, um, because that, that tree was where they gave their life, yeah. and they fought that battle. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're right on the trail going, the Applegate Trail is yes. right here. Yep. And the Applegate Trail Museum. Oh, folks, if, you've, if you have an interest in history and want to feel that you were there, stop in Wolf Creek. No, Sunny, Sunny Valley. Valley. Sunny Valley. Sunny Valley. And see that museum, you'll feel like you really walked history. You can also rent the little church school, the little schoolhouse one, and have your family reunion there or your wedding. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to one of those. Hmm. Live history, relive these rich, rich uh, threads that go way back. Yes. We've got a minute left. How can I say thank you? Thank you for having us. Yes, yes. And we're looking forward to celebrating on April 26th of 2014 our 80th anniversary of the Rogue River chapter in Grants Pass. Wait, and you welcome us all. Oh, yes, yes. please. I'm Bernie Martin Beck. Where else could you have found this bit of history? And I hope it's been as much fun for you as it has for me to wind back that calendar to the 16 <laughs> to the Mayflower. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a, a big trip for me. I'm Bernie Martinbeck saying thanks again for tuning in.